and welcome to My Career and Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to John Lieto from CT Corporation. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry-leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launchpad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast to, dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management to understand how they got there and to talk with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by John Lieto, the Director of Data Management at CT Corporation. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest, but in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. John, hello and welcome. Thank you, Shannon. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm a fan and a follower of the podcast, so it's an honor. There's been some amazing, amazing uh, data managers and leaders in data on this show, so it's just it's a privilege, so thank you. Oh, well, thank you for A, following the show, and thanks for being here. I'm so excited to hear more about you, because um, we've met up a few times and chatted, you know, through LinkedIn and, and such, so I, I'm anxious to hear more about your career and, and how you got to where you are, but let's, let's, let's start there. Let's start, so you're the Director of Data Management at CT Corporation, so tell me, what type of business is CT Corporation? Yeah, so CT Corporation is uh, in a business that you probably never heard of. When I interviewed with the company and, and back in 2000, so I've been at the corporation since 2000, so it's almost 24 years, but I've had different roles, so it hasn't felt like 24, to be honest. Um, but anyway, I didn't understand what we did. So we are the leader in the registered agent space. You'll say, what is mm -hmm. that? So to explain it, I'm going to use your own company as an example. So Dataversity, most likely a small business, most likely an LLC. You're a registered business. Probably you formed this company. Tony Shaw probably formed it in Delaware or wherever his accountant told him to. So typically, that accountant or lawyer will reach out to CT Corporation. CT Corporation handles corporate compliance for the top 1,000 companies in the world and mid-sized corporations, small businesses, period. We help companies stay in compliance. We form them, we merge them, we um, file their annual reports at the states for them. We basically are their partner, the quintessential middleman. Um, mm -hmm. Our clients are typically law firms, lawyers, mm -hmm. paralegals, and corporations. Um, we also deal with entrepreneurs, um, it, we have we have special uh, services for folks who do that kind of work, um, but that's what we do. We help companies stay stay in compliance. Uh, we have 50 states in union with 50 sets of corporate laws, which is really hard to keep track of. So most people will just say, "CT, you do it for me." And that's what we do. Yeah. Very cool. So. Um... Tell me, as the director of data management, what do you do at CT Corporation? All right. So data data management as a formal practice in my company is like seven years old, just almost exactly. Um, but we always had a sense of data management. It just wasn't an official thing. Um, and I've been working in data my almost my whole career, um, but not informally like I had the last seven years. Um, but as a director of data management, I have a a fairly robust, um, time-proven master data management um, practice. It's what I presented to Data World several times. Um, it uh, got some acclaim because it is real-time and it is uh, integrated with our ERP and our CRM in real-time. So it's kind of an interesting way of doing MDM. It's very transactional. Um, layered on top of that, we have a data quality practice. Um, where we mostly deal with the customer domain and all the related pieces to that. Um, I also have people in my group that 
are platform and process leads. Um, they're like sort of like the business analysts that work with stakeholders on uh, product management, essentially. Uh, so I have a few of those folks. Um, I do and manage data related audits for the business. Um, we work, well, CT Corporation is part of Walters Kluwer, as you can see back there, mm -hmm. which is a worldwide uh, organization. We are in the legal compliance division of Walters Kluwer. Um, I actually am a member of the Walters Kluwer Data uh, Center of Excellence, but we, um, in that area, we have to stay in compliant with the corporate standards. So, so I do handle some of those uh, data related audits. Um, I'm, I act as the product manager and folks on my team do for customer domain and entity domain data assets. So like we have a, a, a um, enterprise data hub. So I'm the business sponsor for that data hub, which includes a reporting data lake. Um, I do have folks that report to me, but we kind of own it from the business sense, not the technical sense. Uh, we are a very traditional data management group in that we're not the technical folks. We're, we're the why and the what, not the how. Um, and I do lead a team of professionals. I have I have uh, about 11 people on my team right now, but uh, seven direct reports who are all seasoned analysts uh, with, with, with long tenures of the company. I think the shortest tenure is 10 years. It's just amazing how wow. folks have stayed at this company. Um, it's been a cool journey, actually, uh, but you'll hear more about that later, I guess. That's what I do. <laughs> Well, I love it. That's very fascinating. And I'm not surprised to hear that, you know, when you mentioned that you, you've already had data practices in process, uh, you know, mm -hmm. implemented before you formalized a, a group uh, and your current role. Because uh, I can imagine that, you know, to do what CT Corporation does, you have a lot of data that you're working with. I mean, that all the data on your clients and to keep them oh, compliant. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're a big consumer of uh, Dun & Bradstreet data, um, which is mm -hmm. like a firmographics mm -hmm. uh, data provider for us. We use it to understand our customers. We actually use the, um, a very sophisticated way of segmenting the customers. So like if, if data diversity was one of our customers, we'd probably have you in our small business experience. Mm -hmm. So we would know the type of compliance you need to uh, conduct business. Um, so we mm -hmm. do that by data. Um, we do have a large force out there. We have about between sales and service, about 750 people who are one-on-one -on -one with customers. But even that, it's just so many. I mean, we have thousands, hundreds of thousands of customers. Um, so we would never be able to keep up with it without without tools and and some sophisticated ways of handling data. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you've talked a lot about how you work with data in your job. Anything uh, specifically that you're monitoring that you're you're managing yeah. aside from the the MDM program and yeah, so it's a big one. So so yeah. we use data in my own team to to look at our you know we profile to look at data quality. Um, mm -hmm. We we have a uh, ongoing uh, massive data management um, a, a capability where we are merging duplicate records and looking at data quality every day. I have offshore teams who, who are in the weeds uh, reviewing records and, and merging them, trying to help the, our customer service and salespeople uh, work on the right records. Um, before we introduced MDM, um, we did have quite a few duplicates. Um, in fact, I would estimate 25 to 30% of our customer records were duplicates. That is down in the teens or lower now. Um, which is respectable when you, if you got close to our business, you'd understand why there's some duplication in there. So it's not the, 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 the paradise goal for, uh, for golden master record keeping at all. Um, if we were a medical or health or insurance company, we couldn't deal with this kind of duplication, but we're not. So it's, it's, we're a service company, so we can handle it. Um, we also, like I said earlier, we, we use third party data to, to, to understand our customers. Yeah. Um, and we we collect and manage data for for like I said the Fortune 1000. Um, but the, one of the most important things we do, our fiduciary obligation as your agent, is this one main thing: if you get sued for some reason, a lawsuit happens, 
um, or some state compliance issue happens, you entrust CT with getting that lawsuit to you most times same day. Yeah. Our clients are JP Morgan, Walmart, you name them. Um, and we are committed to getting their litigation to them. Bank of America, you would not believe how many lawsuits, <laughs> millions a year uh, in, in, in the corporate um, law space that are served. And we need tools and data management to process them. When a lawsuit comes into one of our sites, it is scanned and that metadata is taken right from that, um, we call it SOP or service of process. And we've built tools that take that metadata and route it to the right recipient. Um, if you're the paralegal at JP Morgan, you would get a ping that says you just got served uh, on some entity that you own. Um, so you better be in court by this date. Um, so that's what, that is probably the most important thing we do for customers and to do that correctly, we, we need data. So. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Okay, so let's talk a little bit. Let's back it up and talk a little bit about how you got there. So tell me, John, you know, it is this what you wanted to be when you grew up? Like when you were just, you know, say six years old, is this was this the dream? Like, I'm going to go and be the director of data management. <laughs> I was looking forward to this question because you've had uh, some some really like deep technical folks on this chat uh, on the podcast and everything. Yeah. Well, I'm going to break that mold pretty good. So so when, uh, when I was a kid, um, I wanted to be a studio musician. Um, oh. And I pursued that career. I, yeah. I went to school for music. I uh, uh, was, was a music teacher, uh, trombonist. I, I played in lots of bands and orchestras. I still do a bit now. Yeah. Um, but I taught for a while. And that was my world, my world. Um, and the world completely changed for me um, in the, I'm going to say the late 90s. I could be off a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it was, it, it was the, no, actually late 80s. When I went to a music conference in upstate New York, and I saw a guy with, a, I think it was an Apple II GS. We're talking like before computers had hard drives. Yes, I'm <laughs> yeah. that old. So, um, and he was doing music on a computer with a keyboard. And I just flipped me out. I was like, what is going on here? So long story short, I got a computer, started getting into it. Um, I incorporated like technology into my teaching practice, my musician practice, recording music and all that. And then um, I had an opportunity to, um, over summer working, to join a, like a, a computer like coaching team that would help corporations get off of DOS onto Windows. Um, oh, oh, yeah. I learned everything on my own and I was offered a job to stay with them. And, wow. and I stayed with them. Um, and I got into process. Like I started to understand, like I wanted to know what was the business process behind the software or behind the things they wanted to do with the software. And that what that led to another thing. And then all of a sudden, I was looking for jobs and got a job with uh, Philip Morris back then and as a system, like a business systems analyst. And that's where I started working with data. And that's the late 90s. Um, wow. So that's how it all started. So it wasn't it wasn't uh, a thing for me, but yeah. I, but I think the thing that really helped me propel my career to where it is today is I I always liked explaining and being like technology to folks that were business folks or didn't understand technology. And I love speaking with technologists. So I became the the middle guy, the business analyst that did that translation. So I worked on a lot of requirements, did a lot of training. Um, and data just came along with it. And then after you work with the company for so long and 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 lead teams and understand the systems and and the why and the what and where all the you know the bodies are buried, well, data becomes kind of sort of natural. Um, I'll I'll add one more thing to the story. So I had one of the most uh, generous, um, really really um, great leaders uh, in in seven seven years ago. Uh, she took over our team and we were building, going to start this data management group. And she's like, you know, John, I think you'd be perfect to head this up. And I didn't know anything about data management, right? About formally. And she, she did something for me that I, I would hope everyone has a chance for this. And she said, you know, if you're going to take this job, 
what would you do with it? Get back to me in a couple of weeks. She literally handed this opportunity in my lap. Um, I went and built my own job description using traditional, really sound data, like, you know, uh, data management practices. The, it came out so good that my senior VP looked at the thing and said, I'm not going to even interview this guy. Just give him the job. So that's how I got my job as the wow. director of data management. Um, I wrote yeah. my own job description and um, it just took off from there. It I built it. it it's been the best seven years, best position I've had. Um, and you, you guys at Data Diversity are a big part of it because when I started my group, one of the first things I did was to look for training, but not only me, but my team that I was growing. I had experienced group that had all this understanding of our data, but no clue on, what, on, on how to fix things, right? So we started enrolling in Data Diversity classes and we did several of them. Um, I have a bunch of books back there that you guys are very familiar with. And um, still to this day, I'll always think of very fondly of you guys. And that's one of the reasons why I keep speaking and going to data world. And uh, so that's that's really how it all happened. And it's been a cool ride, um, but very unusual, I guess, um, in that I started out <laughs> as a musician. <laughs> Visit dataversity.net and expand your knowledge with thousands of articles and blogs written by industry experts, plus free live and on-demand webinars covering the complete data management spectrum. While you're there, subscribe to the weekly newsletter so you'll never miss a beat. No, well, you're not the first, actually. Um, but no, I'm not. You're not. No. Um, but, and there's, you know, there's a very big tie between music and data for sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're especially in the thought process. But I love the curiosity and, you know, the commonality. There's so many different paths that people have taken to um, to into data and to various data careers. Um, but the commonality I'm finding amongst all data people is that curiosity, that innate curiosity. Like you were curious about somebody producing music with a computer. And so you decided to just go learn computers. So it's that constant learning you're talking about constant education and um so it, that's very very cool uh i mean and uh, it's so impressive that you created your own job really uh <laughs> <laughs> <you're> just, <laughs> your I'm gonna, job. Well, when we yeah. produce this i hope to to send that person the the link to this and i'll say uh you're in there if you listen <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and and I have to imagine it wasn't too much of a stretch. I mean, how do you how do you think that senior management like really came on board and said, you know, oh, this is so important. We got we got to formalize this. It, it's a great question, and um, we had a, a leader back then. He's now moved on. I think he retired actually, but he came to the point where we had two major problems in the company that he saw that was preventing us. Now we're the leader in our space, so it's. Leaders in their space definitely struggle with goals, right? I mean, and of course we have we have a couple of competitors that are right right on our heels. So it's not like we're sitting up top some high on some mountain somewhere, but still the leader in space, how do we get better? Where's our goals, right? And I think we just hit a brick wall. And the two the two biggest findings was we definitely had tr trouble in our invoicing. And you'll say, What's the big deal? You just said an invoice. Well, not so much. So if you think about how complex corporate law could be and the fact that you don't even know who your customer is, like it could be a lawyer, could be the company, sometimes it's both. You'll send, yeah. a, you'll send a bill to the lawyer, the lawyer says, don't bill me, bill the customer. Well, who's the customer? We don't even know. Like it's just, just constant mess. So we had to fix yeah. invoicing and then data, data management and customer data. So our sales and service people kept saying, I, I don't know who my customer is. I can't get a hundred you know, in 50 degree you know, view of my customer. I can't, 360, I say. I can't get, um, I, I don't know their address. Their address is incorrect, right? Well, we had this sound case. And when I do my talks about MDM and how we addressed it, we had a, a we came to MDM with a with problems to solve. And that's probably why it's been six years of, of success with very little issues um, mm -hmm. is because, we fix the address on demand at the moment you enter it. If you go to create a customer record, 
or edit a customer record, every time you click save, it's going to MDM. And MDM says, just address those that match the postal service address. Do you want to use this one? It's the default one. You got to say no, right? And there's things like that. But why did we do all that stuff? Well, we did the research. We had requirements. We did not do MDM or data management because it's good to do. Right. We did it because it solved the problem. And we, we're sticking to that to this day. Like my, I, I think I was telling you before we started the, uh, the, the podcast was I had a meeting with senior VP today. And again, we want to do these other things in, in data management, but we, we always go back to what business problem is it solving? And I guess one of my advice I would give to, you know, I hope to get the chance to talk about that, but is always map your stuff to, to business outcomes. Don't just do it because it's good to do. Because you know what? It don't, it, sometimes you don't do the good things. Yeah. Right? Unfortunately, yeah. it's true. Yeah, yeah. And you're so speaking my language. I love opportunities. Like, oh, problems to solve. Let's go shine. Let's go, <laughs> Let's go solve those problems. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so tell me, John, then what has been your biggest lesson so far in your career? You know, I, I, I thought a lot about this one. Um, and I mean, there's so many things. Right? You have to look at this career and say, oh, God. But I would say at this at this stage, um, I would say each day you need to create value. Provide something, small or large. So when you approach your work day, it's like, what value am I give today? Don't just mail it in. Don't just go to your calls. Like, what can I do? Even if it's a small conversation with one of your direct reports, or it's a big deal that you, you know, because those things kind of add up and just build on them. So every day, what value did I did I provide? Sometimes you give a lot of value. Some days it's very little, whatever. That everybody has days like that. But that's kind of what I would say has been the biggest learning. Um, and you'll you'll do fine. You oh, I like I like that a lot. So that so then uh tell me, you know having worked with data for uh, a bit now and and kind of stumbling into it even, you know, what is your definition of data? Yeah, so, and it, this is another question that I was looking forward to getting because I've heard so many people talk about it. And yeah. so I, even though I try to be strategic and I try to do that whole thing, but I, you know, in the end, I'm an in the weeds kind of guy. So so when, when you say data, I go, mm, I cringe a little bit, right? Because to me, it's three points. Data is the raw material for information. By itself, it doesn't do much. It's the outcome of some transaction. You took a picture, right? Or you created an order, or you created a customer. But applying meaning and context to it makes it information. Ah, now we got something. Then apply insights and the why, and the why now it's knowledge, and then you can drive outcomes. So to me, I don't like to use the word data. It's about information and knowledge. Sure. So that's how I look at it. Yeah. It's kind of a nerdy kind of way to look at it, but that's that's kind uh, of how I. No. I like it. Yeah, yeah, I like it a lot. Yeah, you but you can't have information and knowledge without that foundation, without that no. data. No. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So then, John, do you see the importance of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Yeah, I have to probably agree with everyone that's done the, the, the webinars. It's, I mean, we're in this amazing time for data management. I mean, it's like it was, I think it was, I'll, I'll just say five years, probably not the right number, but five years ago, all you heard about was data scientists complaining about having to spend 80% of their jobs cleaning data and 20% doing their job, right? Um, that's become a reality to the point of, of uh, the companies are not dealing with it anymore. They're, they want to do something about it. So data management is a real thing. Um, I think it's like, you know, with, with AI and now this like dangerous use of data before it's context, before it's actual information and insights, I think you're going to need folks who can align with the business, um, work on the right things to get the quality just where it needs to be and provide meaning and context. I think that's not going away. In fact, it's, it's going to grow. It's just about investment and what the companies assess as their risk. You know, unfortunately, the data world is assigned very closely to risk management, right? It's it's uh, nice to have, good to have, and must have, right? 
my company, yeah. I really would give it an, I mean, it's a, it's a generalization, but I would say that my company is more in the good to have feeling. So I do have to fight to get things done, but you know, people that work in insurance and the banking industry and you know, credit cards, no, they have to have it. So, you know, it might be, it could be, it would be cool to work for them. You know, like I don't have to justify my existence, just go work over there. Um, but I'm sure they have their own channel uh, challenges. So that's how oh, I sure. think about yeah. the, the industry. I think it's going to explode. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I think a lot of companies are, are onboarding data management um, divisions and offices. And so, um, so what advice then would you give to people looking to get into a career in data management? Yeah. At any level. Um, at any level. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, it's, I mean, if you're, if you come into it like me, I'll give you that example, then I'll give you another example. So if, if you're a guy like me who was in the company, but wasn't working in a formal role, you know, number one thing is to align with the business, right? Understand your, your customer or your company, if you're a consultant, understand their, their values, right? Mm -hmm. And their high level goals and objectives. Get that first, right? Second is understand the why for everything you're working on. Why? Why? Don't be afraid to ask that. You know, this will help you prioritize. Like some people, people are afraid to ask that. And I and I always tell my folks this, like, why? I'm not, I, I don't want to be annoying and give them the seven whys, you know, the whole seven whys thing. But I'm like, guys, if you don't know why you're doing it, it might still be good, but you're kind of not getting it 100 percent. Right. You could do better. Um, and the other thing I would say is really important is and I did this when I started because I had a really good mentor who was working with me behind the scenes is go for the quick wins. Mm -hmm. I mean, they matter. Mm -hmm. It's like show them and show them quick. The other thing I would say is always have a hundred day plan. Mm -hmm. Always. Right. Those things really, really reflect well on you. And executives love that. It's like, wow, this guy's took a job and he knows what he wants to do in the first hundred days. Now, he might not fulfill everything, and all you do is keep updating it. Well, it's day 60, and I only did two of those things, and now it's a 150-day plan. Is that okay? Right? But that close alignment is going to bring so much creds, and then your regular like chops around data management will just happen. But you really have to align, and I would give that to, to everyone, is, is be curious and, and learn the business. Learn why, right? Because it's a business yeah. role. It's not a tech role. I'm I'm be really big into that. Um, I don't belong in IT, even though I could play there. I don't want to be there. Um, I need, I need someone else can own the technical asset, but it's the business side that you want to be on, at least for this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Makes very good sense. Oh, well, John, it's been such a pleasure. And I would be remiss if I didn't ask if it's somebody wanted to find out more about CT Corporation, where would they go? Yeah, there's just go on the public the public website. I mean, if you type if you type in registered agent, CT yeah. comes up immediately. But uh, I gave you a link to CT Corporation. There's a really nice website. It tells you everything we do. I, like I said, it's not something you think about. Um, it's just a. Um, in fact, by the way, I didn't say this, but CT Corporation is a pretty old company. It was formed in uh, around 1892. So, oh wow. Um, yeah, and, and Walter is even older than that. I think it's the mid 19th century. So these are all very old uh, companies, but in the legal space, um, but performing a, um, a service that's really, really important and also helps companies be who they want to be. You know? Yeah, well, that is super impressive. I mean, and, and the the fact that, that uh, a digital transformation has happened uh, so Over the last 20 years, we went from, I think Walter's clear was 80... 90 percent paper to mm -hmm. reverse the entire thing in fact nancy mckinstry who is still the i think she's still in the top 50 ceos in the world um of, of walters kluwer she's credited for this digital transformation she went from that and flipped it around we're now down to like less than 10 percent paper that's amazing yeah it, that... it is pretty impressive oh <laughs> i think we could do a whole podcast just on that <laughs> <You bought her. laughs> 
Well, John, it's been such a pleasure. I am so grateful yeah. that you agreed to do this and, and take the time to talk with us today. Thank you, Shannon. It was such a pleasure. I love bumping into you at all at LinkedIn, but also at, at, at Data World. Um, the hello and welcome just wakes me up. So uh, th thanks, <laughs> thanks for doing everything you do. Uh, thank you so much. Well, I appreciate it. Oh, and to thank you very much for um, and to all of our listeners out there. And if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest in podcasts and in the latest in data management education, you can go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Until next time. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe.